Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still on mathematics and five. Uh, now on question number four from the question paper, which was written in February 2022. Uh, question number four, which is actually on integration. So like I always say, it's good that we work on past exam papers so that you understand how they ask these questions. And at the same time, learning the topic uh, is one of the best things that we can have because we do not have time actually to work uh, on single part with so many things to work on. But I think this is going to help us. Okay. Anyways, without wasting much time, I'm going to start on question 4.11. So we are given determine the integral of y with respect to x in each of the following cases. So this is your y, which is equivalent to this expression. So we are supposed to integrate this with respect to x. All right, so I'm just going to find a space where we are going to put this in. Okay, so this is 4.11. So we have put the integral of y, which is uh, 7x, minus 2x to the exponent of 3 and everything uh, by e to the exponent of x to the exponent of 4 minus 7x uh, squared. All right, so that's what we had there. So the question is, uh, which integral are we supposed to, to use? We are Integrate, we are integrating with the respect to x, but which part are we going to use? Uh, just taking a look on what we have here, there are some expressions which have got something in common here. Uh, the x to the exponent of 4 minus 7x squared and this part here, there is a linkage between these two. All right, so what are we going to do? Whenever we put that, we can uh, always try to apply substitution method. Uh, it depends with the given expression, but for this one, it was best for us to try substitution. And I'm going to use this expression on e, on e to the exponent of f of x, this one. This is the one that I'm going to use as my u. So I'm going to let my u be equal to x to the exponent of 4 minus 7x squared. Remember, substitution method, um, we are supposed to find the u dx so that we can substitute here in place of dx. So du dx is going to be 4x to the exponent of 3 minus 14x. So this is what you're going to, to have here. All right. Uh, now from this part, there is something that is uh, a little bit common. You'll see it later on. But for the meantime, let us find our dx. Uh, what are we going to have here? Because this is semi like over 1. So you can cross multiply and divide by dx at the end. Let me just do it for the sake of others to understand. So this is going to be du is equal to, if you cross multiply, this is going to be 4x to the exponent of 3 minus 14x by dx. So find dx, definitely we have to divide by dx both sides. If we have to divide, sorry, by the bracket, not dx, because we want to find the x. So we're going to divide by the bracket here, okay? So which is 4x to the exponent of 3, minus 14x so that this can actually cancel. But on this part, it is going to remain as 4x to the exponent of 3 minus 14x. So that is the expression for dx, which is du over uh, 4x to the exponent of 3 minus 14x. OK, remember your substitution method. We are supposed now to substitute whatever that we have into the normal expression that we had uh, before. So there, we are going to substitute what we got so far. So that means this is going to change into the integral of uh, the first part. Do we have anything that has changed so far? We do not have here. This is going to remain as it is, which is 7x minus 2x cubed. So this is going to be 7x minus 2x cubed, okay, by e to the exponent of this part is going to change because remember we said let u be equal to this. So this is going to be e to the exponent of u. All right, so we are going to have e to the exponent of u by dx. In place of dx, now we are going to substitute this part, which is representing dx, which is du over 4x to the exponent of 3 minus 14x. All right. Remember, we introduced u, so we are supposed to have an integral with respect to u, but we still have the x, and this x must 
cancel out. If there is nothing that we can do, therefore we are supposed to substitute X in place of a U in place of X, but this part can cancel out. I want you to see what is happening between these two expressions that we have here, because this is the same like over one, okay? If we can write this, it's same as over one. So definitely these two can work out something. Let's simplify this aside and see what you're going to have. We are going to have seven X minus two X to the exponent of three over four X to the exponent of three minus 14 X. So there, there must be a miracle which must happen there so that this can cancel. And what can we do? All right, I want you to see something here. Uh, on the top, we can actually fake, we can just see, leave it like that. We can leave it like that because yeah, there is X, there is X cubed, but we can fake out a negative two. So let's see, leave the part on top like that, which is a two X to the exponent of three over below here. This is supposed to be seven X, but we've got negative 14 X take note, this is negative 14 X. So what are we supposed to factor out? We are supposed to factor out negative two so that it can be a positive. So if we factor out negative two, it's now negative 14 X divided by negative two, which is seven X. We do the same on this part uh, of four X to the exponent of three. If we divide by negative two, it is going to be negative two because that's four divided by negative two, which is negative two. We have got X to the exponent of three, which is remaining. All right, so that miracle that I was talking about is going to happen now because these two are the same. So we can easily cancel them out. So we are going to remain with the one over minus two. So that means we have got a minus a half from these two expressions that we had from this expression and this expression, we are remaining with minus half if we are to simplify properly. So that means we are going to have the integral of, all right, so let me change. We are going to have the integral of, all right, so that's it here. Since we have got a half minus half and it's a constant, we can take this minus half out of the integral. So it is going to be minus half. We are remaining with e to the exponent of u d u. This is what is remaining inside now. So as we can see, it's now an uh, easier integral. Remember, if you're integrating e and it's e to the exponent of u like that, it just remains like that. But uh, because it's just a one, you are supposed to find the derivative of one, which is just one. Remember, if you integrate e to the exponent of f of x with respect to x, we are going to have e to the exponent of f of x over the first derivative of f of x plus c. So in this case, the first derivative of u is just one, so it is not going to change. So it is going to remain as e to the exponent of u plus c. But uh, we introduced u in the expression and said u is equal to x to the exponent of four minus seven x squared. So now we are going to substitute back that u. That is all about substitution method. So it's half e to the exponent of that u that we saw, that we took, which was x to the exponent of four minus seven minus seven x squared. That was minus seven x squared, okay, plus the constant of integration. So that will be the answer that you are going to have at the end. So as you can see, guys, these were uh, necessary stages that you're supposed to take uh, in the integral. Uh, when you are, whenever you're working with the substitution method, uh, that is what is important for you. So you choose uh, the expression for you so that later on the expressions must cancel. So it's very, very important that you inspect uh, your person uh, first, then you introduce your you after that. All right, we are not going to waste much time. We're going to move on to the other part, which was the 4.12 of the question and see what we had. So I'm just going to remove this part. All right, so let's get back to 4.12. We have still have got the integral. But this time we've got the integral of six is a fraction that we have. And what type of a fraction is that? That is the question. All right, so let's, let us just write it down and see what we're supposed to have here. So this is 4.12. We've got the integral of this fraction of six over seven plus x squared uh, dx. So um, if we are to check here, we can see that it is difficult, very, very difficult for us to integrate 
uh, by any method that we can think of. But there are formats that we are given in our formula sheets whereby we can be able to write those numbers in, in, the, in those formats. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of the six first so that I can introduce the format to you. We've got uh, six over is the whole number. So you can just take it out, which is six, the integral. If we remove six here or factor out six, we're going to remain with one over seven plus x squared dx. Now there is this integral in our formula sheet, which states that the integral of one over a squared plus x squared dx is equivalent to one over a actan x over a. All right, plus C. Do we can we write this expression that we have in this format? Yes, we can. Uh, because already here we've got an x squared here. This is x squared, we've got x squared, but this seven is just supposed to be written in terms of x squared, uh, in terms of a squared. So any number, uh, maybe it's it's an x. For, uh, for us to write this x in terms of a squared is just the same as the square root of x squared. Remember, square root of x squared is equal to x. So it's the same thing on seven. We are going to write this as the integral of one over the square root of seven. Then we square that. But remembering that the square root of seven squared is equal to seven. We haven't changed anything. You can even cross check on your calculator the square root of seven, then we square that it's equal to seven. So it's just another way of writing, okay? Another format of writing, okay? But X is still as X squared. So we haven't, guys, here we haven't changed this seven. It's still the same as seven, but we have just changed the format of writing it. All right, so with respect to X. Now let's substitute into this formula. The formula states that whenever we are integrating this, we are going to have one over a, which is a is a number that is being squared. That's a squared. So in this case, we are referring to a as the square root of seven, the number that is being squared here. That is the square root of seven. So we are going to have one over the square root of seven. So we've got one over the square root of seven. Actan, we have got x over a. So on actan x over a, x is not going to change over a. Remember we said our a is the square root of seven. So you can write this as the square root of seven like that, plus uh, c, which is the constant of integration. All right, so that's what you're going to have. Uh, you can just multiply by six if you want, because six times seven, six, six times one is a six over square root of seven. So we can write this as six, over the square root of seven, actan uh, x over the square root of seven again. So this is going to be actan x over the square root of seven plus c. So by doing this, you've got your answer, but some they can even write in another format because if you use your calculator and divide six, divide by the square root of seven, you are going to obtain six square root of seven, over seven. So you can even write that way as six square root of seven over seven if you want. So someone can write this as six square root of seven over seven. Actan, uh, here we put x over square root of seven. So the same as one over square root of seven. So you can even do that. One divide by the square root of seven, which is square root of seven over seven. So it is going to be square root of seven x over seven plus c. So, so many ways or formats of writing, but uh, you can even leave your answer, leave your answer at that stage. So that is the, that was the integral of that expression that you're given. So as you can see, um, yeah, also you must learn how to work with the formula sheet um, or some of the, most of the things you'll be given on the formula sheet, just try and uh, apply your formula sheet properly. All right, we are going to proceed the, 4.13, we are given the integral of a fraction. That's a fraction, and we are going to try and see what was best for us to integrate that fraction. So we are given the integral of, uh, all right, let's write it here a um, little bit hey, like this. So this is 3x to the exponent of 3 for the integral of 3x uh, to the exponent of 3 plus 4x squared minus 6, everything 
over x minus 2 dx. All right, whenever we are given a fraction like this, it is very, very important that you first apply long division because we can see that the denominator that we have has got a lesser exponent or a lesser power than the numerator. We have got the highest power in the numerator is three. The highest power in the, in the numerator is three and the highest power in the denominator is one. So on that case, you are supposed to apply a long division so that we obtain a proper fraction or it can be a mixed fraction. So we are going to divide by x minus two. So it is going to be x minus two. So we divide first into three x to the exponent of three plus four x to the exponent of two minus six. So your long division back to mathematics N3. Okay, so that's where we had that long division whereby we always use the first term. So it's the first term divided by the first term. So it's three X to the exponent of three divided by X. So as you can see X and X will cancel. We are going to remain with three uh, X squared. Then remember that you're going to multiply back everything here. So by multiplying back, everything is three X squared by X which is three X to the exponent of three, three X squared times minus two, which is minus six X squared. Then we subtract. So you multiply back and subtract. So it's divide, multiply back, subtract. All right, let's subtract three X cubed minus three X cubed will cancel. And here I've got um, four minus minus six, that's four plus six, which is 10. So we are going to obtain 10 X squared. Then we drop whatever that is remaining. So we're going to drop this negative six here. All right, we are back to the division again. First term divided by first term. So it's 10 X squared divided by X, which is X will cancel with X squared. You are going to remain with 10 X. Then we multiply back everything just like what we did. So it's 10 X times X plus 10 X squared, 10 X here times minus two. So it is going to give us minus uh, 20 X minus 20, that's 10 times two, which is minus 20. Then we subtract, just like what we did from the previous part, we're going to subtract the two, which is 10 X squared minus 10 X squared, that's a zero. Okay, I want you to note here we've got X, but here we do not have X. So it's the same as like we have got zero X because we do not have X. So it's going to be zero minus minus 20 X. So minus and minus, that's a plus. So it's zero plus 20 which is 20 X, then definitely we have six that is remaining here. We have to drop this number again, which is uh, negative six. So now we've got 20 X minus six. We do the same, we have to divide again. So let's divide always first term and first term. So it's 20 X and X. So as you can see, X and X will cancel. We remain with a 20. So 20 multiplies back everything. 20 times X, that is 20 X. 20 times minus two, that is a minus 40. All right, then we subtract again here. All right, by subtracting, that's 20 minus 20, which is a zero, minus four, minus six, minus, minus 40. So it's like this, minus six, minus, minus 40. So definitely this is a plus. So it's minus six plus 40, which is 34. So you're going to obtain a positive 34. As you can see, we can't divide here because this is 34, this is X. We do not have X. So uh, it is impossible for you to divide. So that means this becomes your remainder. That's our remainder. Okay, so after dividing, we divided uh, by X minus two into this expression. This is what we got after dividing by X minus two, we got this expression, which is on top here. This is your answer that you got. So we got three uh, X squared plus 10 X plus 20. That's what we got. And a remainder, so always the remainder you add. So this is a remainder of 34. So I'm going to add the remainder of 34 over what was dividing. We were dividing by x minus two, so you divide by x minus two, the one that was dividing. So as you can see, now this fraction is a proper fraction and it represents that expression that we had before. So with this expression that we see here, this expression that we see, that is the same 
as this expression which we had under the integral. So we are going to simply integrate that expression that we got. So it's going to be the integral of 3x squared plus 10x plus 20 plus 34 over x minus 2. Whatever that we are integrating is being integrated with respect to x. All right, so that's it. Let's integrate the integral of 3x squared. So as you can see, it's going to we are going to add here. That's three, so it's going to be three x to the exponent of three over three. Remember you divide by that three and three will cancel. So you're going to have x to the exponent of three. So that's x to the exponent of three plus 10 x. This is same as one here. So if we add one, it's going to be two. So you're going to have 10 x squared over two. Three into 10, that is five. So this is going to give us five x squared. 20 is a constant. So it's going to just have x, which is 20 x. And we've got 34 over x minus uh, x minus 2. 34 is just a whole number, so you can just write 34 here. All right. Remember, if you're integrating uh, 1 over x, we actually get lean x. So that's the same thing. But if you are given 1 over maybe it's ax plus b, it is going to be 1 over a lean ax plus b. But in this case, we've got x minus two, so it's just going to be lean x minus two. So it's 34 lean x minus two plus the constant of integration. Don't forget the constant of integration. All right, so that's what we are going to have from this whole expression. That was the integral. As you can see, we can't go further from this, but uh, these are actually the typical questions that you have. As you can see, uh, know your division after your division and your integration. Then uh, we're done. So that's what we had. Uh, let's check the 4.14, that's a trig. Uh, we are given a trig and uh, they were supposed to apply our identities here. Take note, this is sine 4x cos 7x. Uh, whenever you're answering this type of a question, what I want you to note guys is that um, always try by all means to start with a bigger number a bigger expression, the, a, 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 a trig that contains a bigger term or a bigger number, like this we've got 7x. So this can be written as y is equal to cos 7x sine 4x. It's one and the same thing, cos 7x sine. Uh -uh. Okay, sorry for that interruption, guys. Oh, okay, so what I was actually trying to say here is that whenever you are working with a, a trig, try by all means to start with a bigger number. Why am I saying so? From uh, your formula sheet, uh, there are so many identities which are given. Here we have written cos and sign. Okay, there is this identity which is written in terms of cos and sign, which states that if we have got cos A, cos a sine of b, because these are different numbers. It is equivalent to the half of cos. So this is going to be sine, not cos. Remember, uh, it's cos sine, all right? So you're going to have the sine of a plus b minus the sine of a minus b. If it was for cos and, and cos, it will start with cos, but if it is cos and sine, it starts with sine, so it's half sine of a plus b. So that means it is possible for us to use this idea. Okay, let's just write our question here. This was 4.14. So remember, we have changed this to cos. It's now cos 7x uh, sine 4x dx. Okay, so that means in place of uh, cos 7x, uh, sine 4x, this is your a here, this is your a, this is your b. So we, we are going to substitute now, okay? So let's find uh, cos 7x sine 4x in a simpler way. So this is going to be half of sine a plus b, which is your a is seven, so it's seven plus four. So it is going to be sine uh, seven, plus four, that is 11. So you're going to have sine 11x minus sine 
a minus b your a is seven so it's seven minus four seven minus four which is three x so that's what you're going to have uh so uh as we can see we are now having a simpler identity or a simpler ex trig expression not an identity but a simpler trig that can be integrated this trig we can actually integrate directly without any hassles so that means it's easier for us to integrate so we're going to have uh the integral of but this half is actually outside of this so you can even write it outside so it's a half the integral of what we have now inside here which is sine 11 x minus sine 3 x like this with respect to x so this is what we are going to integrate now with respect to x so knowing that the integral of sine, if you are integrating sine, is going to give us negative cos. So the integral of sine uh, f of x is going to be negative cos f of x over the first derivative of f of x. So that is the expression that you're going to have whenever you're integrating with respect to x. So here, that is going to be half the integral of sine 11x. So it's going to be negative cos. So that's negative cos 11x over the first derivative. So if we differentiate 11x, that is 11 minus here. But take note, the minus is going to be affected by the minus that is cos is going to have. So it's now a negative and a negative, which is going to be a positive. So this is going to be positive cos uh, 3x over the first derivative of 3x, which is 3, okay? Everything that we have here plus the constant of integration because we have done our integration now. So you can actually leave your answer at this stage or you can expand by a half. Remember, we've got a half, which is outside of the brackets here. So it's half times minus one over 11, which is minus cos 11x over, this is just multiply two times 11, which is 22 plus one times cos three x, that is cos three x over two times three, which is six, plus the constant of integration. Take note that two is just multiplying the bracket, not c, c is not affected by two. So that's what you're going to have in simplest form and you can't add this, you just have to leave it like that or in this format. So as you can see, uh, it's something that is easier if we are to work on more questions, guys. I always advise you work on more questions uh, it can be much, much, much easier than it looks now. All right, 4.15, we are now given arc sine of x. What can we do to integrate arc sine x? All right, so let's just have our question aside. So this is arc sine x on 4.15, okay? Which is the inverse trig. So that's an inverse trig, that one. The integral of arc sine x with respect to x. Um, Funny enough is that we are given this integral in our formula sheet. If I'm not mistaken, we are given this integral, but still they want you to do it. They haven't given us, no, they haven't given us. They gave us the derivative, not the integral. Okay, so this is the integral that we have. Um, for us to integrate this, we are going to apply by parts, okay? Uh, by parts method, okay. So how do we apply by parts? We are going to separate both. Remember by parts, we're supposed to have two functions here. Um, the, the formula states that is the integral of f of x by g prime x dx is equal to f of x by gx by uh, minus the first derivative now of f of x gx dx. Yes, that's our bypass method. Okay. On this formula, we can see that we've got two expressions here, f of x and uh, g prime f of x, uh, g prime x. So we are supposed to rewrite this, okay, just as the integral of one times x sine x dx like that, so that we can choose which one is going to be our f of x and which one is going to be our g. So always, if we, I want you to see, if you are to choose your f of x to be a one, the moment that you find the first derivative is now a zero. So that one is going to affect. So never choose that to be a, a one. So that means your f of x is supposed to be arc sine, okay? So I'm going to have my f of x as arc sine x because we have got this uh, derivative in our formula sheet, okay? Anyways, then that means 
one and dx is the one that is representing this part of g prime dx so g prime uh, dx is equivalent to one dx all right so what do we need on f of x we need the first derivative so that means here we are supposed to find the first derivative with respect to x and what is the first derivative of x sign uh, from our formula sheet is uh, actually given as the first derivative but we have got this uh, as uh, as an let me just write for the sake of others. All right, we have got uh, the derivative, not integral. The derivative with respect to x of uh, arc sine uh, of arc sine x should be, uh, let's just say f of x here, is given as uh, f prime x over uh, the square root of one minus f of x squared like that. Okay, so if we are to check here, uh, f prime x is one is equal to x. So the first derivative of x is one over uh, the square root of one minus f of x squared, which is x squared. So it's going to be one x squared. So it's going to be like this. So that's what you're going to have here. Okay, then uh, from the g prime x, we are supposed to find the integral here. So we're going to find the integral with respect to x, integral with respect to x. And that means we are going to remain with gx is equal to the integral of one with respect to x, that's an x. So that is our gx now. So let's substitute now back to the formula. We have our formula here, which says that it's going to be f of x into this and that and that. All right, so that means our answer is going to be equal to f of x by gx. f of x, that is x sine and gx, which is x. So I can start with the x and just say x, x sine x minus the first derivative of f of x by gx. This is our first derivative by gx and our gx is x. So this is this can be written as, okay, let me just write it aside. What, what was it supposed to be like so that we do not waste much time? Your f of x is this one over uh, the square root of one minus x squared by uh, gx, which is x. So as you can see, same as x of one. So the numerator is going to be multiplied together, which is going to be x over uh, the square root of one minus x squared dx. So we are supposed to integrate this part now. Sorry for that. Um, we are supposed to integrate this part now. So what can we do? What can we do now to integrate this part? If we are to check, there are some, famil uh, some familiar things that we actually have. So we are going to apply at least substitution method is the best way that we can use there. Uh, let's see substitution method because there are some familiar uh, if the integral that you're given there is direct therefore integrate direct but in this case uh, substitution is the best that we can actually use uh, how can we use our substitution which part can we let it be equal to you remember substitution there is a part that is supposed to be equivalent to you that you're supposed to choose all right let's do this aside here okay so let's just let our u be equal to this part of one minus x squared. I think that can actually work properly. So it's going to be one minus x squared. Then remember you have to find du dx, which is one, that's a zero. So it's going to be minus two x. Then dx, like what we did previously to make the subject, to cross multiply this and that, then we divide. So definitely it's going to be du over minus two x if you do that. All right. Uh, or minus d over two x. I don't know which way is best for you to write it. So uh, that means uh, we are going to have, here yeah, we are integrating this part here. This is the part that we want to integrate. This is the part, all right. So that means we are going to have the integral of x over the square root of u, because this is now u. One minus x squared is u, so it's now the square root of u by dx your dx is now written as du over minus 2x. So there we can see that x and x can cancel and this minus two can even be written outside of the integral. So it can be uh, the integral of, so you can just start with minus half because this negative two is in the denominator. So it's just like minus half 
the integral of the square root of u. Can we integrate the square root of u? No, we have to rewrite that as one over u to the exponent of a half. But one over means to the exponent of a negative. So it's going to be u to the exponent of a negative half with respect to u. All right, then let's integrate. Remember the integral, what is supposed to happen? So it's going to be minus half times u to the exponent of, we are going to add one here. So if we add one, it's minus half plus half, which is a half, okay? Minus half plus a half plus a one, not a half plus a one, which is a half. So it is going to be u to the exponent of a half here over a half. Remember, what you use is the one that you're going to divide with. Okay, so here it's same as we've got minus half in the numerator then uh, and this u. So it's the same as writing this as minus a half like this u to the exponent of a half over a half. That is what it actually looks like. So this can actually cancel we are remaining with minus u to the exponent of a half. But um, the minus u to the exponent of half, where did we actually take it from? Remember we said, let u be equal to one minus x squared. So if u is one minus x squared, it actually means our answer is going to be minus u, which is one minus x squared like this. That is your u, but raised to the exponent of a half of which someone can rewrite it again as minus one minus x squared. This is one minus x squared like this under the square root, the square root of, because we are having to the exponent of a half. So that is what you're going to have from this integral. So which means therefore our answer now from this integral, remember this is the question that we are answering. Therefore our answer is going to be x, x sine x minus, remember there was a minus here. So it's going to be minus the answer that we got here. And our answer is also having a minus. So it's minus times a minus, which is a plus. So it is going to be plus the answer that we got here, which is the square root of one minus x squared plus the constant of integration. All right. So that's what you're going to have on your final answer. So let me know, guys, if you you had any other method. Remember, this is uh, maths, guys. There are so, so many ways uh, way that we can use. And uh, I actually uh, want to know more. Uh, let us know more. Let us work from the methods that you might have so that uh, we can learn from there. And if you have your own method, which you need us to work on, yeah, let's try and see those methods if they are applicable to this integral that we had. But uh, the easiest way that we had was actually to apply by parts. Uh, when you are working with the integral of, uh, with the integral of uh, inverse trig, remember there is differentiation of inverse trig, then there's also integration of inverse trigonometry. All right, so that was, that's what we had. Let's see the other part which is 4.2, determine the integral of y with respect to x by resolving into partial fractions or in, in or by resolving partially, that is into partial fractions. So given this expression must be done partial fractions, you are you told what to use and what to do. So we have 4.2 here, which is the integral of x minus one over x squared plus x, the x part by partial fraction. So that means we are supposed to apply the partial fractions part first, then we do our integration. So x in minus one over x squared plus x. How can we resolve to partial fractions? Uh, this can be factorized. This is same as x over x minus one. All right, uh, this is same as x. We can factor out this x here because x is common. So this is same as x in into x plus one. X squared divided by x, that's x, x and x, that's one, okay. So into partial fractions, we've got two uh, uh, brackets that we have, and these are linear expressions that we have. So this is under a linear, so it is going to be a over x plus b over x plus one. 
or you can start with x plus one, you can start with x. I don't know which one is best for you, it's one and the same thing. So let's just equate the numerators here. We've got x minus one, which is equal to a into, uh, remember if you divide x and x will cancel here, so you remain with x plus one. So we are going to remain with x plus one plus b into, here we are dividing x plus one, x plus one will cancel, which means you remain with x, so it's going to be bx. All right, so that's what we have. So from these two, I can let my x be equal to zero or to negative one. So let x, or when x is just one small, it's one and the same thing. Okay, when x is equal to minus one, this becomes negative one. So it's negative one, negative one, which is negative two is equal to negative one plus one, that's a zero. So here we're going to have negative one b. All right, so negative b, to find b, divide by negative one, so b is two. We move on to another statement. When x can be equal to zero here, that means we are now having a zero here. So zero minus one, which is minus one, is equal to zero plus one, which is one a. So here we've got zero times b, which is a zero. So that means a is equal to minus one. All right. Having our a being equal to one and our, our a being equal to minus one and our b being equal to two, we can now substitute this as the integral of, okay, we are going to have the integral of a over x. In place of a, we are going to have minus one. In place of b, we are going to have two. So this is going to be written as minus one over x plus b, which is two. So it's two over x plus one. So that's what you're going to have after applying partial fractions. Now, if we are to integrate this minus one over x, guys, remember this is over x, so it's going to be minus lean x plus two is just a number. So two lean x plus one, that's what you're going to have plus the constant of integration, very easy. All right, so these are typical questions, guys, that we have uh, under mathematics N5 integration. So like I always say, it requires you to work with more questions. So as, it, as long you know your partial fraction, look, they've got five marks for that, but uh, it was actually nothing uh, because it was for you to express the partial fraction first. So that's what we had a total of 23 marks from this question number five. So these are, this is how actually they do ask these questions and even the layout of the marks that's uh, similar to almost all the question papers. So you need to revise as much as question papers with the time that we have preparing ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time. That's it guys from Amazon African Emotives working on Mathematics N5. And don't forget to share our videos and platforms to your friends at school and wherever you are so that they can also learn with us, uh, practice with us as we are preparing ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time till we meet again.